Hello and welcome to this Astranti YouTube video. In this video, we're going to be taking a quick look at Porter's Vantage Gym, one of the most important models in the SEMA syllabus. And you will learn about this in your E1, in your E2, in your E3, in your P2. It appears in most of the major case studies as well. It will appear in your OCS or may appear in your OCS and may also appear in your management case study. So it's a very, very important model that you are familiar with, particularly because it's the primary way within the SEMA syllabus of really assessing just how an organization adds value, how it adds value throughout the organization, not just in one area, and then also how it passes that value onto the consumer. And if you are interested in this video, if you like this video, want to see more, then please like the video and also subscribe to our videos. And the value chain is all about taking inputs, putting them through the value chain of the organization, adding value during that process, and then output that is passed on to the consumer at a profit so that the company can take that profit and put it back towards more value adding activities, towards more inputs and so on. So let's look at an example of that, an example of how value can be added. So this is Juliet. Now Juliet doesn't like the supermarket. Whenever she goes to buy bread, whenever she needs bread, she goes to a local baker. The reason why she goes to a local baker rather than a supermarket is because she prefers the service she gets there. She prefers the quality of the product there rather than the standard supermarket. She's willing to pay more and to go out of her way to go to buy bread from the baker than from the supermarket. Even though at the end of the day she comes home with a loaf of bread, she's willing to pay extra to go out of her way to buy it from a baker. And this is because of the added value that she gets or that she perceives from going to the baker. And that in essence is what the value chain is. And before I go on to talk about primary and support activities, just to let you know, just to clarify it with you, if you are concerned that some of the words around the screen are being cut off, by the frame at this point, please do not worry. We're not looking at those bits at the moment. We're only focusing on the individual parts of the value chain. So the value chain is comprised of primary activities. That's inbound logistics. This is how you get the raw materials, raw ingredients, whatever it is into your organization. Operations, how well you produce your product, how well you produce your service. Outbound logistics, how well you get your product out to retailers, to wholesalers, to the consumer. How well you market your product and the distribution channels in which you sell it. And the final primary activity is after sales service. Now I'm sure many of you at times in your life have had issues with products, be they ovens, washing machines, etc. And it really makes a difference to you as the consumer if they have a good after sales service. If when something goes wrong, you can contact them, you can contact them easily, they can solve the issue that you are having, that really adds value to the consumer. And then support activities are things that are not directly involved in the product that is being sold, the service that is being sold, but they are still important. They allow the company to have these decent primary activities. They support it, hence the name support activities. So they include the infrastructure of the organization. So it would be the company structure that allows it to have the best operations, the best marketing, etc. Good things such as bookkeeping, such as the accounting systems, the budgets, all the things that allow the organization to run effectively. Technological development and technology, this includes ensuring that they're using the best possible machines to do the job, to run the production lines, to store all the information on computer systems, IT, etc. Human resources, ensuring they have a well-rounded human resources department that 
It shows they're hiring the best people for the job, that they are keeping them satisfied, motivated, and procurement as well. This ties most specifically to inbound logistics. It's all about relations with suppliers, ensuring they get good prices, get good quality materials for production, etc. And then all this goes together plus the margin, and that becomes the profit that they receive from the consumer, from the buyer at the end of it. So we take all these inputs, all these raw materials, raw resources, we add all these different functions to it, and that allows us to charge a profit margin at the end. That's how we as an organization add value and make our money. So let's look at these now more closely, but run through them using an example. So let's say we have a car company. How would a car company apply the value chain? So for inbound logistics, that would be the raw materials, the raw steel, the raw components to make the cars. Operations, how they use that materials, the quality of the production line, how well they put the cars together, how efficient the production line is, how developed the automation, the mechanics involved are. Outbound logistics would be the distribution. So how are we going to get our cars out to the showrooms? How are we going to add value in that sense? Are we going to ensure that we have the most on-time deliveries? Are we going to ensure that we can distribute around the greatest possible scope so we can sell all over the world and add value to our customers there, the people that are selling our cars? Will they want us to deliver to all four corners of the country or all four corners of the globe? Marketing and selling perhaps could be how we market, perhaps a television advert for one of the cars, making people want to buy it, giving them something, selling the experience of owning this particular car. If you look at different car adverts, if you look at Mercedes adverts, it's always about quality and luxury and selling an image. In that sense, if you look at BMW, it's all about being exciting. If you look at smaller cars such as Ford, such as Kia's, Vauxhall's, it's more about fun and happy. And after sales, the service would be things like warranties. A lot of car manufacturers offer these three-year warranties or up to 100,000 mile warranties, which gives you confidence as a consumer when purchasing that product because you know that if anything goes wrong with that car within that particular timeline or within particular mileage, you know that you will get it replaced. You know that they will fix it. You're willing to pay extra to have that warranty. You're willing for them to add an extra, say, 500 or 1,000 pounds or dollars onto the selling price of that car because of that after sales service. And this will tie in more to the value section that we're going to look at later, where we're looking at what is it that people value, why it's important to give people things that they value, and how that means you can charge more for your money. So they'll pay more for your car if they get this good after-sales service. And we'd also apply that to our support activities. So for procurement, that would be having an experienced team, good teams with good relations to steel companies, good relations with oil companies, all the kinds of companies that a car manufacturer would need to deal with. Human resources, ensuring that we stock our procurement team, that we stock our finance team, etc., with the best people for the job. We do that by having a good human resources department. Technology development, of course, the machines, a lot of car companies produce cars by large production lines with lots of automation and therefore if you're going to have a lot of automation we need to have good quality automation and infrastructure again is more your general business concepts your general accounting concepts so having a good accounting system good bookkeeping system etc is how a company would benefit or how it would add value via its infrastructure so now let's look at how a company would use a value chain, how anyone would use the value chain in their daily operations. So basically a value chain could be used to examine your organization, see where it is you add value. What is it that you are doing 
breaking down the components of your organization to see where you are adding value and where you could add more value or perhaps where you could reduce value if this particular thing isn't adding any value then it's perhaps wasted money to invest in it see if we can gain any efficiencies via doing this so if going back to the car company example if it becomes apparent that people don't care about these 100,000 mile warranties because they sell their car within 20,000 miles and the warranty is invalidated if it is sold during that 100,000 miles, then it's not something people care for. It's not something that people will pay for. And therefore, perhaps we could sell the car for a cheaper price and make more money because more people would buy it. Or going back to the example of inbound logistics, if people don't care so much about the quality or the, the quality feel of the interior, they don't mind a cheap plastic feel to the dashboard because they never ever touch it, then perhaps we could use cheaper plastic than buying expensive plastic that feels nice. To understand the links between processes as well, this is more clear perhaps in the direct and primary activities for example, it's easy to understand the link between inbound logistics and operations and outbound logistics, as in you get good quality materials, you put it through a good quality process, operational process, and you get a good quality output. That sounds logical. Also to analyze the competition. What are the competition doing to add value? What is our rival car company doing to add value to its organization? And as a result, all of this can be the, the basis of a competitive strategy. For example, if we are wanting to undergo a cost leadership strategy, that is in a sense where we are the cheapest around and thus we need to sell at a cheap price to keep people buying our car because we are the cheapest car available, the cheapest that's of enough sufficient quality to buy it, then we need to look at the value chain to see where we can save money at each individual step. If you look back to the target costing section, we would need to be set a target cost for each individual bit. We'd have to have a target cost for our inbound logistics, a target cost for our operations. If we go over budget in our inbound logistics, then we're already over budget when we start our operations, etc. And also for a differentiation strategy it would be the opposite. We would be looking at where we could add increased quality because, of course, in a differentiation strategy, you're about being the best or about being the most unique, the most exclusive. So we would be looking at places where we could add exclusivity. So it could be through perhaps outbound logistics, as in we can only sell our car to certain places because we only want consumers to buy our cars in certain places because we don't want our customers to go to any regular garage forecourt and buy one of our cars we want them to be exclusive they have to be bought at very specific exclusive events and locations and so on you know you never see ferraris and lamborghinis just in normal garage forecourts. They're almost an invite-only events where you can go and see the latest Ferrari, the latest Lamborghini, because it's all about selling this exclusive image, this exclusive opportunity to be a part of the brand. So how might it work then for a service company? Because of course this is very different from a manufacturing organization. It's easy to apply the value chain here. So let's look at how a restaurant Right, apply the primary activities and the support activities of the value chain. Now, we're looking at a company, it's a restaurant, and it wants to sell very high quality specialist Chinese food. So it's a very high quality competitive strategy. You'll be looking at more of a differentiation strategy than a cost leadership one. So for primary activities, we need the finest quality ingredients. When we talk about inbound logistics, we need the finest quality ingredients to make the finest quality food. For operations, it will be the cooking and the service. So we need to have the best chefs. We need to have the best waiters that have the highest quality customer service, the kind of customer service that people leave the restaurant and think, oh, that waiter was so 
pleasant. Well, I've never had a waiter like that. You go to another restaurant, they don't treat you like that. They want to get you in and get you out. But no, they were really, you know, made you feel like royalty almost in that place. Outbound logistics would be perhaps the delivery of the food. If there was going to be a delivery wing of it, you would add value there by perhaps offering 30 minutes or less. A lot of these sorts of places, Chinese restaurants, Indian restaurants, pizza places, they often have a, a 30 minutes or less deal or you get the food free or you get money off because of course if you you order these sorts of foods when you're hungry you don't want to then wait 90 minutes if you have to wait an hour and a half from ordering it for it to actually arrive it's frustrating you want it to arrive when you are uh, a early but also when they say it's going to arrive even if they say it's going to take an hour they you want it to be that hour if it arrives far too early or far too late compared to when they said it would, then it's frustrating to you because you would have planned your evening around when that food was going to be delivered. You don't want to not be ready for it. Or you don't want to be in the shower when it arrives because you thought you had half an hour when you actually had 10 minutes. Focus on quality would need to come through in the marketing as well. Rather than talking about the price, you need to be talking about where the food is from, where your chefs are from, what is good about the food. That's, a diff that's another way in which you market something differently. If your customers care about price, you market on price. If your customers care about quality and don't mind paying extra for it, you focus on the quality of it. And perhaps you have a survey where you would ask people who had purchased your food or people who'd attended your restaurant to grade the performance of the waiters, the ambience of the restaurant, the quality of the food, so you could then take that information and improve on it. Support activities, obviously procurement, going back to how we talk, well, we're talking about how different departments, different parts of the value chain fit together. Procurement obviously links very heavily with inbound logistics and sourcing those high quality ingredients would be the key thing, the key goal for the procurement team. Recruitment and dismissals, if necessary, would also be very important to ensure that we've got good quality waiters, good quality staff members in our organizations. If anyone is not portraying the brand, portraying the quality, we'd have to ensure that they were either let go or we trained them up again, ensured that they were. Ordering and marketing as well, technological development. We need to have a good IT system in place to take online orders, take telephone orders, ensure people always get the, the right orders, ensure that the details of the customers are kept safe so they can take payments online, etc. And again, infrastructure would just be something like accounting. We have a good accounting system in place to ensure the business can remain profitable, to ensure we're always taking account of all our costs. So that's an overview of the value chain, an overview of how it can be used to add value, both in a manufacturing organization and also in a service industry. So once again, I'll just reiterate what I said at the start of the video, that if you have enjoyed this video, if you have found it useful, then please like the video and subscribe to the Estranti YouTube channel, as we'll be posting many more of these videos over the coming months.